Hello, I'm Troy Deitmeyer, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Iowa, and welcome to Episode 2 of the Yield Pyramid. In our first episode, we introduced you to the concept of the Yield Pyramid and how we need to take care of the blocks, if you will, that are on the bottom of the pyramid first and then work our way up. We talked about soil drainage being the most important thing that we can fix out in our fields to ensure high yields and a profitable crop production system. Because seven out of our 10 building blocks in our pyramid are related to crop nutrition and fertility, we also went over how to take accurate and repeatable soil tests, as well as how to use your combine yield monitor data to supplement your soil test data to ensure accurate fertilizer application and maximum return on investment. Today's episode is gonna be on soil pH. Now, soil pH affects many things in our crop production system. The availability of the nutrients as well as the efficiency of the fertilizer that you apply is directly correlated to your soil pH. Things like your soil biology and microbial activity are also affected by soil pH levels. Herbicide efficacy as well as some herbicide carryover issues are all directly impacted by your soil pH, which is why it is our number two building block. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the chart that shows our different nutrients that are needed for our crop production system. Now you can see that some nutrients are highly available across a wide range of soil pH levels. Other nutrients are not very available at say high pH levels and other nutrients are not available at low pH levels. Now you can see where we have the green shaded area kind of shows our targeted pH range. And that's kind of the sweet spot, if you will, that kind of averages out the balance between those nutrients. So what we found in our research data here in Northeast Iowa is that we like to shoot for a 6.3 to a 6.6 soil pH when it comes to row crop production. And then we also try to shoot for say a 6.7 to 7 soil pH when it comes to alfalfa production. Now Iowa State University recently completed some studies and some field trials on soil pH and liming. And I really encourage you to go online and take a look at Dr. Malarino's published paper, but we're gonna give you the Cliff Notes version here. So if we go to the chart, you can see that Dr. Malarino found that when we have soil pH levels starting to drop below say 6.4, we start to see a little bit of a yield response to lime applications. But where it really starts to become an economic response is once we start getting below a soil pH of 6.0. Now, Pioneer, about five years ago, did a very intensive soil sampling initiative in our on-farm research trials. Basically, trials that are conducted in our customers' fields, just like your fields. And what you'll see in our data, over thousands and thousands of soil tests, when we correlated yield to soil pH levels, our results are very, very similar to what was found in the Iowa State data. You can see that once we start dropping below a soil pH of 6.0, we start to lose yield fairly quickly. So what this told us is that we have a huge educational opportunity with our customers to ensure that the first thing that they look at when they get their soil test results back is to take a look at their soil pH. We found in our thousands of soil tests that 85% of fields tested had areas that were 5.9 or lower. So again, there's a large opportunity out there in what we're finding in our customers' fields for better pH management. Now, the second part of that slide also shows us what is called buffer pH, and you can see there as well that once our buffer pH started dropping below 6.7, uh, yields started to trail off very quickly. So now you're probably wondering, well, Troy, you're talking two different things. You're talking soil pH and you're talking buffer pH. How do I really know the difference? What is the difference? So soil pH is actually short for soil solution pH. And that basically refers to the water and the nutrients that are in the, the soil moving around in solution. The buffer pH 
is actually what we refer to when we're talking about the pH of like your clay particles and your organic matter particles in the soil. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some actual soil test results from the lab. You can see here that we have two columns. One is labeled soil pH and the other one is labeled buffer pH. So they're going to lie next to each other typically on most lab results sheets. So we really want to make sure that we know which one that we're reading. And typically your soil pH will be lower than your buffer pH. So how do we determine if we need lime or not? Pretty simple. The soil pH basically is a yes no question if you think of it that way. If my soil pH readings are 6.3 or less, or especially 6.0 or less, we know that we need lime. If it's higher than that, we don't. So if you answered yes, my soil pH is below 6.3, I need lime, then basically we go to the buffer pH column. And there are charts available, and you can see an example of one from University Extension here that'll kind of show you how many tons per acre of lime that you need to apply based off of your buffer pH. So we're going to run through a few examples here, but keep in mind that we do try to get our buffer pH up to about 6.8, and that's what we showed in that data slide just a little bit earlier. So let's actually run through a couple examples. So you can see we have some examples there on our sheet, and you go ahead and you take a look at the very first soil pH. What's it say? Well, it says 6.8. So we ask our yes or no question. Is our soil pH above 6.3? Yes, it is. So essentially, we know that we do not need lime on this particular soil sample. So let's go to example number two, 5.9. Yes or no, do we need lime? Yes, we do. So if we go across and we then look at the buffer pH, which the buffer pH is stating that it's 6.3. We go down the chart to our 6.3 buffer pH reading, and it shows that we need 6.5 ton of lime. Now, let's take a look at our last example. The buffer, or the soil pH, excuse me, is 5.5. So we ask our yes-no question. Do we need lime? Yes, we do. It is below 6.3. Go ahead again, use your chart. That's tells us that we need approximately 3.4 tons per acre when we have a buffer pH of 6.6. .6. So those are just a few examples on hopefully that made clear how to use the soil pH and the buffer pH on your soil test readings. One thing that I would like to add is that if you are in a no-till situation or maybe you have a farm or a couple farms that are in no-till situations, we want to make sure that we don't apply more than two tons per acre, or two and a half tons per acre in that range, two to two and a half tons per acre of lime at any one time. The reason for that is because we're putting that on the soil surface and we're not getting the incorporation with tillage, what can happen is if we apply say four, five, or six ton of lime, is that top inch or two of soil could have a very high pH. And remember from the first chart that we showed you here today, high pH levels can limit some nutrient availability. So keep that in mind. If you have a high recommendation for lime on a no-till situation, apply maybe two, two and a half tons, wait approximately two years, and then go ahead and apply the next two to two and a half tons. So, I hope you found this episode on Lyme beneficial and informative, and now you have the information that you need to look at your own soil test, determine if you need Lyme, and how much to apply. Lyme is very, very critical, and it's why we say it's the number one thing, the first thing that you should look at when you get your soil test results back. Now the good news is with, with soil pH and liming is that it is basically the least expensive building block in our pyramid to fix. And the other good news is since they've been cleaning up the coal-fired power plants and putting the sulfur scrubbers in, we don't have the sulfuric acid or the acid rain that we had 20, 30 years ago. So many of you might remember your parents or your grandparents talking about liming fields 
every four to five years. There's just not a need for that anymore because we have reduced the acid rain. I've worked with some customers and we haven't applied lime in nearly 20 years. So just be sure to keep your soil test current and make sure that soil pH is the very first thing that you look at when you get your soil test results back. So if you have any questions on anything covered in today's episode, be sure to contact your local Pioneer sales representative. From all of us here at Pioneer, thank you for your business, be safe, and we'll see you in the fields. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.